Hello, welcome to today's Flipgrid live event. I'm Gile and I'm a part of the Flipgrid family. Shout out to Evan Thinka who is watching from the United Arab Emirates and Angie from Northern Humboldt School District's Indian Education Program. We're so excited to have all of you here with us today. Today we are celebrating National Native American Heritage Month with a visit to Redwood National and State Parks. Skip, Maya, and Kessie and Princess are all California State Park interpreters and are also Yurok descendants. We'll meet them in just a moment, but before we get started, let me just say, if you don't know what Flipgrid is, it's a free video discussion platform for Microsoft. And we're on a mission to empower everyone on the planet to share their voice and respect the diverse, verse, diverse voices of others. That's why we're so excited about today's event. Today, Skip, Maya, Kessie, and Princess are going to share about the importance of finding time and space to connect to the land that we live on. Let's, let's pass things over to Erin Gates, who's also with California State Parks. Hello, Flipgrid world. Thank you so much for joining us. We are so proud and honored of our partnership with, Flip, with Flipgrid. And I just want to kick things off by welcoming all of you. I can't believe all of the places you're tuning in from. And I am so excited that we are here to connect you with the incredible parks of Redwood National and State Parks and also Sumeg State Park. So before we get started, I just wanted to give you an idea of what we're going to do today. We are going on a virtual adventure. We are starting right here at the mouth of the Klamath River, which is located in Klamath, California. So maybe after this event, you all can look on your map where we are, but you can see the mouth of the Klamath River flowing out into the mighty Pacific Ocean. You are going to hear from three of our interpreters up in this location, Kessie, Princess, and Maya. And then we are going to throw it down to Skip, who's down at Sume State Park, which is a little bit south of Redwood National and State Parks. But we hope you will connect with us not just today, but also on our partner page. You can find our partner page in the Discovery Library. And we are so excited to be a proud partner of Flipgrid. So without further ado, I am going to turn it over to Kessie, who is one of our newest interpreters and part of the Redwood National and State Parks team. Kessie, take it away. Hi, everyone. I'm Kessie McCullen. I am an interpreter for the Redwood National State Parks, and I just wanted to share the importance of being here today and how important it is to share some of my culture. This is where a lot of um, our local fishermen and a lot of local community members uh, gather our natural resources, fish, Chinook, steelhead, and this area is super important for us to gather and spend time with each other. And I just wanted to share that this area is really important, not only for our community members, but with local uh, state parks and that we share a lot of good community ties and community relationships in what we build here. Hi, my name is Maya. I'm an interpreter for California State Parks and I'm based out of Sume State Park. And I'm here to also share what it's like to be here at, in the state park and working with uh, youth and with adults. Um, so my relationship with the state parks hasn't always been um, known. So I uh, didn't actually know that Sume was a state park before I had um, come to Sume, which is uh, super funny to me because now I work for state parks and I know all the state parks that are in our district. <laughs> and so it was kind of eye opening to me to see a place that I had known all my life and then see it in a new way, um, in an interpretive way uh, to teach children and teach adults about uh, indigenous culture. <laughs> so right behind me, the mouth of the Klamath River is right here. Um, and this is somewhere that I have grew up fishing. Um, and doing a lot of the things that Kessie was just talking about is gathering for our families, feeding our families. And so I grew up along the Klamath River, but also in McKinleyville. Um, and so I had both perspectives of being in a town and living um, kind of like the you go through the motions every day rather than being out in the trees and being in the wilderness and learning from the wilderness rather than from um, a computer screen 
or um, somebody that might tell you, oh, I heard this on the news, instead of you're actually experiencing those things rather than being behind a screen like we are today. And hopefully this will make you guys all excited to go outside. <laughs> So I think our relationships and our connections to the earth and to the plants and animals are super important because they need us and we need them. Um, and so we need to take care of them. And this beautiful view is what we also need to take care of. And I want to thank you for your time and here's Princess. Hello everybody. My name is Princess Colgrove and I am one of the interpreters here for California State Parks and I am based out of Sume State Park. Um, I am Hoopa and Yurok and Karuk, and on my Yurok side, I'm actually a descendant from Sume, which is the village that is in Sume State Park now. Um, and so for me, it's always been really important to take care of that place because we come from there, we respect the place, and it's always really important that when we come to state parks and when we're um, in these beautiful areas um, that we respect the land and respect the people from those places. Because um, in all of our state parks, there are a lot of different tribes um, that come from different areas within state parks. And so it's always really important that we respect it um, out of respect for the people, but also the place, because these places are really important to a lot of people. And it's also really important that we make our own connections to these places whether it's just loving the place, um, being a part of what's going on, if you are just taking care of it, picking up, making sure other people respect it, making those connections with the parks and the people also in these parks. Um, it's really awesome that we get to be here and um, stream and talk with you guys um, for Native American Heritage Month also. So when we're in parks, it's good to always keep in mind to respect the place, make those connections um, and know where you are kind of um, find the people in your, in these areas that you're in, um, the indigenous tribes, the lands that you're on, and kind of make those acknowledgements. So I'll go ahead and pass it off to Skip. Hi, Queenie. Up now, Skip Lowry. I want to welcome you to Sumag State Park, North Coast Redwoods District. I'm a Yurok descendant from my mom's side of the family. I'm also Mountain Maidu, Pitt River, Irish, and German. So I'm uh, multi-ethnic. Uh, today I'm gonna talk and speak about the special connection I have with my Yurok ancestry. Right now I'm standing on Yurok ancestral territory. This place has memories. People have memories of this place. Since time immemorial, the Yurok people have had relationships with this place, and we still have those relationships today. When you remove people from a place, it hurts people. It can hurt the people, the culture. It also hurts the place. Native American people were honoring their, their heritage of them today, but not long ago, there was a lot of bad attitudes and mentalities and actions to stop us from having our relationships with our places that we always have had. You can see in Northern California where I'm at and throughout the state of California, we are suffering from the lack of relationships between indigenous people and their ancestral territories. We have dealing with wildfires because our cultural burn practices have oppressed. Our language was oppressed. And with language comes worldview. And worldview regarding relationships with the forest and your place is very unique to culture at times. You push every culture back far enough across the globe. We are all from this Mother Earth. We are all connected to places somewhere. Find out where you guys are at. Whose indigenous land are you on? How can I honor the original people and the original worldview and create a healthy relationship with that community? Because we all share this globe. We're all connected and we desperately need some of the traditional ecological knowledge that is found in the worldviews and the languages 
and the ceremonies and, and the regalia in our customs. There's a wealth of knowledge that Mother Earth is depending on us to engage with, to continue. It was set up this way in Yurok culture. We were placed here purposefully to create balance and harmony with our special places, our sacred sites, our land, our oceans, our rivers, our mountains, our deserts. Find out, get out there, find the places you love to explore. Nature is amazing. The globe is so amazing. Find out your indigenous cultures and try to create a healthy relationship with them because there is so much we can do together to make this world a better place for the future generations. Our ancestors, the Native American peoples, never thought about owning the land. We're in relationship. So when we think of land management, I like to think of relationship management. You re manage your own self and how you come into a relationship. You don't manage the other person or the other entity you are in a relationship with. Manage ourselves in a better way. We can tackle some of the tough climate topics that's going on right now, and we can foster future stewards that will take better care of this place than recent generations. I would like to end my time with a short song in honor of the Native American communities across the continent, down through Panama, down to South America, all of the Irish, indigenous Irish people in Ireland. You know, there's the, the Samis in uh, Northern Europe, um, the African tribes, the Australian Aboriginals, the, uh, the, the Asian communities. All of our cultures are so rich and we're connected with place. And so I'm gonna honor the Native American people today with a song, I'll share it from my heart. It's a brush dance song. Sume is a place for healing. It was designed that way. Um, this part of the state park, the community comes and we protect our babies here. We have a ceremony called a brush dance. And so I'm gonna share a song real quick with you. It's a helper song for that baby protecting dance. That's part of this immemorial relationship. E yo Thank you for joining us and uh, letting me share a little bit of what special um, relationship I have with this place. I'm going to pass it back to Aaron. Thank you very much, Skip, and thank you for bringing us out with a beautiful song as well. Um, again, we we are ending our portion of the broadcast where we're talking to you, but what we are hoping is that that now you have an opportunity to ask questions of Maya, Princess, Skip, um, and Kessie. And I just want one more time to acknowledge the the place that we are in now. Um, known as both Sume State Park and Redwood National and State Parks. These are places that are now being protected um, and stewarded by uh, two governmental agencies. So the National Park Service and California State Parks come together to protect 130,000 acres within Redwood National and State Parks. And California State Parks is protecting the lands um, at Sume. But these places have been cared for, stewarded, loved, um, by people for for thousands and thousands of years. And so hopefully you'll be inspired to connect to the people who are the original stewards of the lands that you are on. And that is one way that we all can celebrate Native American Heritage Month wherever we are across the globe. 
So I believe um, we're going to take some questions from the audience now. I'm going to get back off camera and get our speakers up here back on camera, but um, please feel free to, to read us out any questions you may have. Thank you so much, Erin. That was amazing and so beautiful and insightful to see. That was so beautiful. Um, and big shout out to Ms. Turney second graders who are tuning in from St. Louis, Missouri. We're getting so many questions in the chat and we'll get to those in just a moment. But before we do that, let's take a selfie with Skip, Maya, Kessie and Princess. And all educators and parents gather your students in front of the screen in your classroom, living room, or wherever you are so we can capture a selfie of this amazing moment. I'll give you all a moment to set up and while you do, make sure to tag us on social at Flipgrid and also be sure to tag our friends today at Redwood NPS2. Okay, I think we are all ready. Let's do it. <laughs> Smile big. Oh, I love it. Okay, keep smiling. <laughs> you all look amazing. <laughs> all right, that was so cool. I love it. Perfect, and with that, let's get to all of your amazing questions. Okay, so first question I have is, I'm gonna direct this to you, Kessie, and this is from some amazing fourth graders from Tucker School in Milton, and they would like to know, what was life like when Native Americans were first people in the United States? Um, Life was very simple for them. They were very dependent on the natural resources around the areas they lived in and the villages they grew up. Um, personally, my family is from the village of Turup on the Klamath River, and so they grew up alongside the Klamath River and you're only accessible to that area by boat. And so a lot of the um, traditional life ways were dependent on gathering, was um, on getting, you know, ferns for baskets, getting acorns, fishing, um, all types of gathering. And so they were very dependent on the cult, on their cultural practices. And it was a very simple and um, very community based life way. Thank you so much for that answer, Kessie, and for also sharing about your own family and where they were. And now to you, Skip, I, I'm really curious to know how many different types of houses did Native Americans live in? Well, the, Euro, the house behind me here, that's a traditional redwood plank house. And all in the Northwest of California, the Pacific Northwest coast here, um, they often made plank houses that look similar to this. Um, but throughout California, California has some of the most diverse and multiple uh, languages, language families spoken uh, traditionally. Um, so there was a lot of different tribes and they all have their own um, relationship to the plants and their places and built their houses to suit their geographic place and connect with the world um, in their frame of mind. So there's bark houses. Um, the mountain Maidus had round houses that were made out of uh, cedar. And so lots of different houses, but they're engineered very, very well. This is house uh, has specific uh, engineering designs. So they're not just thrown together. They were very, very sophisticated people and communities that uh, were here originally and still here. Thank you so much, Skip, and for giving us that insight and also giving us the opportunity to actually see it. And we're getting so many questions on about how Native Americans lived, and this is great because today's Flipgrid topic of the day is called Yurok Indigenous Living Houses. And we'll show you that in just a moment, but before we do, 
Erin, can you let our amazing students know what they will learn using the topics on Redwood National and State Parks Discovery Library page? Yes. So if you go to the Redwood National and State Parks Discovery Library page um, on Flipgrid, you will see this highlighted topic of the day, and you're going to have a chance to actually connect with Maya, who is going to be talking about the traditional living houses at Sume. And what we're asking you in that topic is for you to listen to what Maya shares, connect with it, um, and let us know what you would want to learn more about, but also what are some of the similarities that Maya talks about with maybe your own personal lives at home. Because even though our lives may appear very different on the surface, we actually probably have a lot more in common um, than we do have that makes us different. And so finding our similarities is what actually helps us connect together. Thank you so much, Erin, and I totally agree. Finding moments where we can connect and find the things in which we share is always beautiful. So educators and parents, let me show you how to find the Flipgrid topic of the day so your students can reflect on all they have learned during today's live event. It's as easy as launching your browser and typing aka.ms slash native. This will take you directly to today's topic of the day. Yurok Indigenous Living Houses. You'll see this video and a discussion prompt that your students can use to reflect on and respond to. You'll also notice a small blue button that says add topic. You can choose to add this topic to a group, create a new group, or save it for later. Think of a group as your classroom. And here is exactly what your students are going to see as they begin to reflect on that topic and submit their own video responses and share the amazing things they've learned today. They can have fun using all the new creative effects and expressions inside the Flipgrid camera. If you haven't seen them yet, be sure to check them out. Remember, you can use this in your classroom immediately following today's event as a follow-up activity, and we'll post the link in the chat for you to copy and paste. And now it's time to get to more of your questions. So now we're going to think about some other things about living houses, and I'm going to take this over to Princess. Do different tribes live in the same location as other tribes? Yeah, so in Northern California, there are quite a few different um, tribes. There's the Yurok tribe, and then there's the Hoopa tribe, um, the Karuk tribe, then um, a little more inland. There's like Maidu, and then down south, there's Pomo. So there's a lot of um, indigenous tribes in this area, but also all over California and all over the United States. There's a lot of different um, indigenous tribes. Um, many of them are very similar and a lot of them are different. Um, and so, yeah, there's a lot um, in um, kind of specific areas um, and there are different kinds of groups. So for Yurok people, there are the people from the river who are called Pulik La, and then there are the people from the coastline where the ocean called Nur or Nur, but all together we're Yurok, um, but there are the two kind of um, groups and there are differences between the two. Thank you so much. And to Erin, a lot of students, both from Ms. Ponty's fifth graders and Ms. Turdy's second graders want to know, how do you become an interpreter and what are the kinds of things that you do? Well, that's a great question. We hope you all will consider a career uh, with your protected spaces wherever you live, whether that's state parks or the national parks or um, any place that is helping protect a place that you love. Because all of us here, Skip, Maya, Princess, Kessie and I, we are all getting to help protect places that we love and share them with others. And that's really what an interpreter does, is an interpreter is the storyteller of a place. And so we speak for the trees, uh, we speak for the animals, we speak for the history and we speak for the cultures. We speak for that which sometimes cannot speak for itself. So the best way to start is to actually just go explore the places that are near you learn about them, talk to the people that are there in uniform and ask them how they got their job and then just copy what they did. Thank you so much, Erin. And to Skip, I would love to know, and 
what did the song that you sang earlier have any translation that you could share? Yeah, uh, how I got that song is I was being helpful for my sister, but I had a bad attitude. I was like, oh man, the, the lot, my favorite basketball team is playing and I, I'm not watching it, you know, and I was running around doing errands for my sister. And then this song came into my bad attitude and it changed my bad attitude and it tells me this. Hey, the Yurok people were placed here to help, to help the world, to help heal, be in relationships, and to be happy and joyful and love life. It's a limited amount of time we get to experience it. And uh, if you're asked to be helpful by someone like you love, like your sister, you should feel good and, and help with grace, not a bad attitude. So my song says, I'm here to help. I'm here to help. Let me help. Let me help. I'm here to help. I'm here to help. Make me help. Give me the opportunity to help, and I will help with a good attitude. Thank you so much, Skip. That is absolutely amazing and so beautiful and a great message for all of us about having such a good heart and wanting to help others. And from Miss Washington's class, they would love to know, do you have any traditional food that you eat? And Maya's coming in on our side to answer this one. Okay. Hi. <laughs> So here at the mouth, they have lots of different fish. Kessie actually mentioned some of the foods that we eat. Um, so we will eat surfish, steelhead, salmon. Uh, there's even elk and uh, black-tailed deer. And then there's lots of huckleberries and the traditional blackberries that actually grow here still. Um, and then also we do have um, different types of uh, uh, like acorns that are um, plants that we use to make uh, acorn mush. And there's also traditional ways of cooking those foods, so they were preserved. Thank you so much, Maya. I can't thank you all enough for sharing your expertise with us and being here and taking the time to give us all these insights. Are there any final thoughts you want to share with everyone watching today? To have fun when you're outside, to learn about all the things that you might not know about. Um, that's one thing that I always want to do is learn more. And I know that I can always learn more when you're around new people in new places. One thing that I want everyone to kind of remember when they're in state parks and when they're in other places is to acknowledge the people that are from there, the original stewards of the land um, and the people who have always taken care of that place and respect the place for those people and respect the people themselves. Yeah, like Maya said, have fun. Enjoy your time, uh, whether it's by yourself or with your family. And just taking care of the land is what is best for our Mother Earth. I'd like to just share that uh, I got my job by volunteering at state parks. And um, so find a state park near you and try and connect with an there's uh you could there's law enforcement there's just a d bunch of different careers that you can explore and get in and volunteer at your state parks and help create those relationships with the places that are special around you and find out who's who else think thinks those places are special and uh honoring the original people of of place is always important Thank you so much. It has been great to be here with you all and learning is a lifelong journey. So we're all on this together and I believe you've all given us some really cool action steps that we can take immediately. This has been so special. Thank you for spending the last half hour with us. We are very grateful and this is not it. We have Fifth Good Live events every week. We have an incredible lineup and would love for all of you to join us as we learn together. You can head to aka.ms slash Flipgrid Live events for more information and to register for upcoming events. Don't forget to check out the topic of the day, which is live now on the Redwood National and State Parks Discovery Library page. Have an amazing day and thank you so much for joining us. Bye.